The McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing AV-8B Harrier II, is a single-engine ground-attack aircraft that constitutes the second generation of the Harrier family, capable of vertical or short takeoff and landing. The aircraft is primarily employed on light attack or multi-role missions, ranging from close air support of ground troops to armed reconnaissance. So, how did the United States even manage to build such a beast? And what are the general specifications of this advanced aircraft? Here, in this video, we are going to show you how to build the most modern advanced strike fighter aircraft, AV-8B Harrier II. The AV-8B Harrier II is a subsonic attack aircraft of metal and composite construction that retains the basic layout of the Hawker Siddeley Harrier, with horizontal stabilizers and shoulder-mounted wings featuring prominent anhedral, which means downward slope. The aircraft is powered by a single Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine, which has two intakes and four synchronized vectorable nozzles close to its turbine. Two of these nozzles are located near the forward, cold end of the engine, and two are near the rear, hot end of the engine. This arrangement contrasts with most fixed-wing aircraft, which have engine nozzles only at the rear. The Harrier II also has smaller valve-controlled nozzles in the nose, tail and wingtips to provide control at low air speeds. The AV-8B is equipped with one centerline fuselage and six wing hardpoints compared to four wing hardpoints on the original Harrier, along with two fuselage stations for a 25mm GAU-12 cannon and ammunition pack. These hardpoints give it the ability to carry a total of 9,200 pound that is 4,200 kilogram of weapons, including air-to-air, air-to-surface, and anti-ship missiles, as well as unguided and guided bombs. The aircraft's internal fuel capacity is 7,500 pounds, that is 3,400 kilograms, up 50% compared to its predecessor. Fuel capacity can be carried in hardpoint-compatible external drop tanks, which give the aircraft a maximum ferry range of 3,300 kilometers and a combat radius of 556 kilometers. The AV-8B can also receive additional fuel via aerial refueling using the probe and drogue system. The British Aerospace Harrier the II, a variant tailored to the RAF, uses different avionics and has one additional missile pylon on each wing. The Harrier II retains the tandem landing gear layout of the first-generation Harriers, although each outrigger landing gear leg was moved from the wingtip to midspan for a tighter turning radius when taxiing. The engine intakes are larger than those of the first-generation Harrier and have a revised inlet. On the underside of the fuselage, McDonnell Douglas added lift improvement devices which capture the reflected engine exhaust when close to the ground giving the equivalent of up to Hosen 200 pound, that is around 544 kilograms of extra lift. The technological advances incorporated into the Harrier II compared with the original Harrier significantly reduce the workload on the pilot. The supercritical wing, hands-on throttle and stick, known as HOTAS control principle, and increased engineered lateral stability make the aircraft fundamentally easier to fly. A large cathode ray tube multi-purpose display taken from the F-Bar A18 makes up much of the instrument panel in the cockpit. It has a wide range of functions, including radar warning information and weapon delivery checklist. The pilots sit on UPC Stencil 10B00 ejection seats, meaning that they are able to eject from a stationary aircraft at zero altitude. For the AV-8B, McDonnell Douglas redesigned the entire airframe of the Harrier, incorporating numerous structural and aerodynamic changes. To improve visibility and better accommodate the crew and avionics hardware, McDonnell Douglas elevated the cockpit by 10.5 inches, that is 27 centimeters, and redesigned the canopy. This improved the forward 17 degrees down, side 60 degrees and rear visibility. The front fuselage is composed of a molded skin with an epoxy-based core sandwiched between two carbon fiber sheets. 
To compensate for the changes in the front fuselage, the rear fuselage was extended by 18 inches, that's around 46 centimeters, and the taller vertical stabilizer of the Sea Harrier was used. The tail assembly is made up of composites to reduce weight. Perhaps the most thorough redesign was of the wing, the objective being to match the performance of the cancelled AV-16 while retaining the Pegasus engine of the AV-8A. Engineers designed a new one-piece supercritical wing which improves cruise performance by delaying the rise in drag and increasing lift-to-drag ratio. Made of composites, the wing is thicker and has a longer span than that of the AV-8A. Compared to the AV-8A's wing, it has a higher aspect ratio, reduced sweep from 40 degrees to 37 degrees, and an area increased from 200 square feet to 230 square feet. The wing has a high lift configuration, employing flaps that deploy automatically when maneuvering and drooped ailerons. Using the leading edge root extensions, the wing allows for a 6,700 pound, that is 3,035 kilogram increase in payload compared with the first generation Harriers after a 1,000 feet takeoff roll. Because the wing is almost exclusively composite, it is 150 kilograms lighter than the AV-8A's smaller wing. The Harrier II was the first combat aircraft to extensively employ carbon fiber composite materials, exploiting their light weight and high strength. They are used in the wings, rudder, flaps, nose, forward fuselage, and tail. 26% of the aircraft's structure is made of composites, reducing its weight by 217 kilograms compared to a conventional metal structure. Most of the first day attack AV-8B Harrier IIs were upgraded to night attack Harrier or Harrier II Plus standards, with the remainder being withdrawn from service. The AV-8B cockpit was also used for the early trialing of direct voice input, which allows the pilot to use voice commands to issue instructions to the aircraft using a system developed by Smith's Industries. The main attack avionics system in the original aircraft was the nose-mounted Hooges and Bar Airs B-19 angle-rated bombing system. The system combined a TV imager and laser tracker to provide a highly accurate targeting capability. Defensive equipment includes several ANBAR ALE-39 chaff flare dispensers, an ANBAR ALR-67 radar warning receiver, and an ANBAR ALQ-126C jammer pod. The trainer version of the AV-8B is the TAV-8B, seating two pilots in tandem. Among other changes, the forward fuselage features a 3 feet 11 inch extension to accommodate the second cockpit. To compensate for the slight loss of directional stability, the vertical stabilizer's area was enlarged through increases in chord. That's the length of the stabilizer's root and hakered. USM's Tevombe Bez feature. The AV Ort Bez digital cockpit and new systems, but have only two hard points and are not combat capable. Fielded in 1991, the night attack carrier was the first upgrade of the AV-8B. It differed from the original aircraft in having a forward-looking infrared camera called FLIR added to the top of the nose cone. A Widesmith Industries head-up display known as HUD, provisions for night vision goggles, and a Honeywell digital moving map system. The FLIR uses thermal imaging to identify objects by their heat signatures. The variant was powered by the F402RR408 engine, which featured an electronic control system and was more powerful and reliable. The flare and chaff dispensers were moved and the ram air intake was lengthened at the fin's base. Initially known as the AV-8D, the night attack variant was designated the AV-8B. The Harrier II Plus is very similar to the night attack variant with the addition of an APG-65 multi-mode pulse Doppler radar in an extended nose, allowing it to launch advanced beyond visual range missiles such as the AIM-120 Amaram. To make additional space for the radar, the angle rate bombing system was removed, 
The radars used were taken from early F-Bar A-18 aircraft, which had been upgraded with the related APG-73. According to aviation author Lon Nordine, the changes had a slight increase in drag and a bit of additional weight, but there really was not much difference in performance between the night attack and radar Harrier II plus aircraft. The AV-8B looks a lot like the original Harrier and it uses the same operating fundamentals. It just uses them a lot better. And that wraps up today's content. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so that you won't miss out on our future contents.